This is a Manhattan-bound two train. The next stop is Intervale Avenue. One thing to know about me is I am constantly falling in love with strangers on the train. This happens to me a lot, but most especially when I see them looking all mysterious and cool, reading a book, being the main character. In that moment, it is their world and I am just living in it. And you know what? I want to be cast as the love interest in this movie. I Where do I audition for that role? However, the harsh reality <laughs> is that my social anxiety would mean that I would never ever in a million years actually actually approach these people. But instead of that, <laughs> one thing I can do is find out if the book I see them reading is actually cool and mysterious and good. And so one of my favorite videos that I've ever made for this YouTube channel is where I went on the London Underground, I saw what books people were reading, I then went to the bookstore and bought those books and read them and reviewed them for you guys. Because <laughs> unhinged behavior is my speciality. When they say, please mind the gap on the tube, they mean, please mind the gap between what is socially acceptable and what I am willing to put on the internet. The gap is big, the restraining orders are probably in the post. Anyway, now after that video, people tweet me, Instagram DM me, make TikToks, saying that they now live in constant fear that if they read their book on the train quite innocently, someone might make a video about them. And you know what? You're right to be afraid. You never know what my next move will be. And today we're back and we're ready to do it all over again. Except this time, we're in New York City, new city, new country, new continent, same unhinged behavior. And I had the idea to bring this video back, make it a series because I was sitting on the tube, the subway, the subway. I was sitting on the subway yesterday and I saw that the person next to me was reading All About Love by Bell Hooks. And I may or may not have gone straight to the bookstore and then bought the book. Because this is a book that I've wanted to read for ages and I felt like this was the perfect kick up the backside to actually get around to reading it. I have high hopes for this book. I'm hoping it's gonna leave me bell hooked. So I'm gonna get started reading this book and then we'll take two more subway journeys and pick two other books that I will then also read and review. For your viewing pleasure and to strike fear in the minds of anyone who dares read on the subway. <laughs> Some random guy may come and judge your literary taste and read the book that you're reading. So let's go, welcome. Okay, call me Katy Perry because I've been feeling hot and cold about this book. I have mixed feelings. This is all about love. Today I'm going to tell you all about it. All About Love is by Bell Hooks, who was a social activist who wrote about a wide range of topics, in particular striving to make feminism more intersectional. She was a pathmaker and a rule breaker and a powerhouse. And I actually studied her work a lot during my degree and I always enjoyed it. Now this book, it turns out, is the first installment in a three-part trilogy, all centered around the theme of love. Now, Will I be reading the other two books? No? This one was enough for me. This, this was more than enough. Thank you. Thank you though, Belle. It has so many fascinating observations that are really well explained. And one thing I would always say about Belle Hooks is that her writing is very accessible. It's critical thinking, but in a very readable format. She talks about the idea of cathexis, which I'd never actually heard of before. And cathexis is basically where you focus your mental energy on one person or a place or a thing to a kind of unhealthy extent. And that is not to be mistaken for love, although some of us sometimes do <laughs> mistake it for love. Relatable content. Cathexis, it turns out it has a word. I felt a bit caught out by that one, not gonna lie. She also talks about how love and abuse cannot coexist, about how patriarchy limits the way that both men and women can access love in different ways. And that was interesting. However, this book is so limited by the binaries that it establishes, specifically between men and women. It's also incredibly heteronormative, which really surprised me because Bell Hooks identified herself as a queer woman. So while I thought this book had some interesting observations. I don't think it will ever become the universal and ubiquitous and long-standing manifesto for love that it seeks to be, because it simply isn't malleable or flexible enough to stand the test of time. It is so rooted in establishing differences between the way men and women approach love that I just don't think it's fluid enough for our modern discourse about gender and sexuality and things like that. It's just, it's too rigid an approach. Even the title, All About Love, is kind of ironic and flawed when you think about the fact that it isn't really about everyone and all love that actually exists. The definitions that it establishes just aren't inclusive to all people and therefore this is not 
all about love. I also found myself disagreeing with a lot of the things in this book. Bell Hooks is very assertive with the way that she presents information, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the truth, <laughs> you know? It's pretty much all theory without proof to back it up. She kind of says it's my way or the highway, and sometimes the highway was starting to look kind of Desirable, not gonna lie. What I do appreciate is Bell Hooks being absolutely adamant that you always spell her name, all lowercase. Because I too am dedicated to the insufferable, all lowercase aesthetic. I love it, regardless of how much it inconveniences everyone else. So that was relatable, thanks Bell Hooks. So I think for me, this was like a three out of five stars, maybe like 3.5. But I do think if I saw anyone else reading this book, I would still think they were really cool. I'm not gonna lie to you. And also a great discussion piece. So I hope I see more people reading this on the subway and maybe Maybe one day I will pluck up the courage to actually speak to them. Probably not, but like it's nice to dream, right? <laughs> and now let's take the subway to try to find another book to read. We'll see. I'm gonna keep my eye out. This whole video is pretty much an exercise in redeeming the New York subway for me because my first impression of New York was when I got the subway from the airport to my apartment and someone immediately got onto the subway at like the first stop and knew I was weak and targeted me and just started shouting at me and I was like oh my god I'm gonna die right here I'm not even gonna make it to my apartment is this the American dream like this this is what you guys were telling me about <laughs> anyways obviously now I take the subway every single day and it's fine and I know what I'm doing but at first oh my god it was so confusing the express trains versus the local trains everything being like uptown or downtown I was like, what if I want to go across town? But I think I've mastered it now. Anyway, before I head to the subway, I wanted to let you know that today's video is very, very kindly brought to you by Shopify. As you know, I have my own stationary company called Ink Outside the Box, which is powered by Shopify. So this is a personal recommendation. I genuinely use Shopify every single day and have done for like four or five years now. And Shopify is an all-in-one, easy to use e-commerce platform, which basically just helps with the day-to-day -day running of your business or your analytics, your sales. And with Ink Outside the Box, it has been invaluable, like genuinely it is a better member of the team than I am. And also while I'm on the topic, we have 50% off all our stationery at inkoutsidethebox.co.uk for Black Friday, so you should check that out. So like I said, Shopify is a personal recommendation and I know that lots of you asked me about it and so I'm so buzzing to let you know that Shopify now have a brand new starter plan to help you begin to establish and grow your business with no risk. The starter plan allows you to set up a simple store in minutes with no coding experience necessary, which is amusing to my ears for just $5. That means you can then start selling your products across social platforms like Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, WhatsApp, Etsy, Facebook, you name it. And it's the perfect introduction to e-commerce to kind of cut your teeth before you upgrade to the full power of Shopify as your business begins to grow and flourish, which I know it will. This is so ideal for any new business and connects you to Shopify's link in bio tool, which is called Link Pop, which actually has a two times conversion rate compared to its competitors. So I'll leave the link below where you can get a free trial. So take this as your opportunity, take this as your sign to start your business right now using Shopify. Thank you so much for sponsoring. Okay, so I just went to Brooklyn to go to a bookstore because I needed to buy a copy of this book for the TikTok book club. It's called Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. And weirdly, I saw someone reading this exact book on the subway. I managed to sneak a little picture. You can't really see because they were so far away. But isn't that a weird coincidence? Anyway, I'm not reviewing this book in this video because I need to read it for the book club. But that kind of just blew my mind a little bit. So anyway, after that weird little coincidence, coinky dink, I was then on the way home from Brooklyn and I saw the girl sitting opposite me was reading a book and I really recognized the cover and I couldn't place it. And it's actually the US edition of a book I already have the UK cover of. So that is very convenient for me, very helpful because I already own this book. It's called Acts of Service. Okay, yeah, I just got home and I have that book. This is that book. I brought it with me to New York to read. And so now I guess this is divine intervention. <laughs> this is a sign that I absolutely need to read this right now. So I guess I'll see you when I'm done. I just finished reading this book and I think that my personal act of service is that I just read this book so now you don't have to. It just, it really drags. There's more drag in here than an episode of RuPaul. And also, you know what's funny is that I have read every single page of this book and I still don't understand why that is the cover. It's like they just took a random clip art and then put an Instagram filter over it. Like, I don't understand the relevance of this image. Acts of Service follows a woman who has a girlfriend, but ends up meeting this couple, a man and a woman, who she ends up 
spending a lot of time with if you know what I mean. And we basically have these really long scenes where she's at their apartment and they're having these conversations and intimate times and it's very deep and introspective. And it's kind of like a character study of not only the main character, the main narrator that we're following, but also this couple who she is having these moments with, but also is kind of observing and trying to understand. And it is beautifully written, don't get me wrong. I can't wait to read the next book that Lillian Fishman writes because I know that she has a great book in her. It just maybe wasn't this one. Her writing style is stunning. Stunning like a Negroni Spagliato with Prosecco in it. But with this particular novel, I got to the end of it and I was like, I don't know what this was meant to achieve. Like, I'm still confused about what this book was actually trying to say. I think it got a little bit lost in all its thoughts, that it didn't necessarily see any of them through. What did it say by the end of the novel that it hadn't already said, like, 75 pages in? I'm not sure, I don't know. It had potential for sure, but I think that it just lingered too long on this one kind of affair. It's a detailed unpacking of power dynamics and patriarchy and also polygamy and gender, but I just felt like this was stuck in the realm of being like a short story that was too long or a novel that was missing the second part. Like it felt like there was a second stage that this could have gone to that would have made it more satisfying, more fulfilling. So it just kind of missed the mark a little bit for me. Who is Mark? Why, why are we missing Mark? I, <laughs> I don't know. What I will say is that I underlined so many great quotes. I folded down so many pages to come back to because it's really interesting. The writing is great. And there are moments in here where it talks about obsession or the reason we are so magnetically attracted to certain people. And I think it does that magnificently. So again, this is another book where I have very mixed feelings about it. This for me is a solid three stars for sure. And I also will say that I appreciate the boldness of the person I saw reading this on the subway because most of these pages are so explicit and vivid. Like if I was sitting there reading this on the subway, I'd be so nervous that someone would read over my shoulder and be like, what the hell is that? So there's a kind of BDE involved in like just sitting there openly and, and like reading this, regardless of who looks over your shoulder. I respect that. And so now let's go and find another stranger to recommend a book um, by reading it on the subway. We'll see. The person sitting next to me on the subway today was like the coolest person I've ever seen. And so I was trying to see what book they were reading and they put it down on the chair between us at one point. So I actually managed to take a picture and it's called Mona. It's by Pola Oloixaro and the cover is so funky. I need that in my life. So I'm gonna go to the bookstore now. And I'm gonna try and find it purely for the font. I need, I need this book. I need it in my life. I'm going to the bookstore right now. <laughs> So this is Mona. And really and truly, being honest with you, after the first 100 pages, I thought I was about to come on here and Mona bout it because I was like, what on earth is going on in the House of Commons? Why is this book not going anywhere? And then it got fun. <laughs> it got really fun and silly and ridiculous and absurd and the writing was great and I kind of, enjoyed it. It's about a Peruvian writer called Mona who goes to a literary festival because she's nominated for this big literary prize in Europe. And she's just surrounded by the most insane group of people. They're all authors. And I felt like this really captured how weird authors are. I've been to literary festivals and trust me when I tell you, they are genuinely the strangest people you will ever meet. And this book is really a testament to that and I appreciated it. The main character is kind of spiraling with substance abuse and like having affairs with other authors and it's a wild ride to be honest with you. She's working out for most of the novel if she does or does not belong in these spaces and whether she actually wants to or not. It's satirical, it's daft and it's all about identity and also simultaneously whether identity actually matters. I would describe this book as hypnotic and hallucinogenic <laughs> and erotic and with razor sharp writing, which is really witty and funny, but also just so weird. Weird with like all caps, caps lock, bold, italicized, 
weird. Honestly, with all of these books that I've read for this video, <laughs> I saw people reading on the subway and then bought. I can't decide if I like them or not. And this book was consistent with that. At least there's consistency here, right? It's been more consistent and reliable than the subway, <laughs> at least. What I will say is this book had the most bizarre ending and I don't think I liked it. I don't think that it worked, but get back to me in like three to five working days. For now, I think that the person who was sitting next to me on the subway is even cooler, because this is like a cool book to read. And I'm grateful that I bought this book. Did I love it? No, but were there some interesting insights and observations and comments on the literary landscape? Yes. And I've said the word subway and thought about subway so much that now I want a sandwich, like the other kind of subway. So I'm gonna go do that. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it in some way. The three star books were really three starring in this video. This is definitely another three star book. Um, again, maybe like a 3.5, I think. We had three books with superb writing, but flaws with issues. Um, and that's just how it goes sometimes, you know? This was super fun though. I would encourage you to let your curiosity win sometimes and <laughs> read the books that you see complete strangers reading on the subway or in public places. And you too could get to spend your week with three aggressively average books. <laughs> Am I selling it? I don't know. Massive shout out to Shopify for partnering with me on this video. I really appreciate it. And don't forget that we have a huge 50% off sale at inkoutsidethebox.co.uk, which is my Shopify store. The links for both are down below. And of course, while you're down there, you can subscribe to my silly little YouTube channel. All the best, stay in touch, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Or maybe on the subway, who knows?